So continuing on, how do we get the text in these boxes? Before we do that, I just want to briefly show you something else you can do with the selection tools. So I've copied and pasted all of my boxes and I have them aligned, but now I notice that I have more space on my left hand alignment of the page than I do on, have on the right. So it's kind of a drag to like select each one of these individually, which I could. You can also use your arrow keys just to nudge things over. I could do that. But instead, while I have this selection tool active, I could also click and drag over everything. So now everything is selected and I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard and now I could move things over. And then the other thing you could do, I'm going to zoom out here, is now that they're all selected, I could just use that selection and copy it and paste it down below or use the alt key to click and drag and move it down. So that could be a fast way. But you don't want to do that until you've set up your guides and you know what your alignments will be and so on and so forth because then you have to go and do each individual one after that it sort of defeats the purpose all right so now i'm going to go back and zoom in on one of these boxes and remember zoom tool you can hold the alt key down to switch back and forth there's the hand tool or you can use the space bar to switch to that tool and move things around so your goal with this is to really think extreme like Use these word opposites, use scale and placement to get these, to express the meaning of the words. So I'm going to use the text tool and over here in my properties inspector, I have my fill at nothing. So I'm going to put my fill at black and I have a black stroke, um, which I don't really need to have. And down here I have some font size. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and put in a word. I'm going to type in out for example. So the first thing is let's just talk about the scale. I can select my words, my letters, and then I can go over to my property inspector and the character field. And for the font size, if I go to the drop down, I see the largest font size is 72. Well, what if I want it larger? You can put in a number here. So I could put in 124, for example, click outside that field, and then it comes into play. So you can always do that. You could also select just an individual letter and make that letter a different size as well, if you wanted to experiment with that. I'm now going to take my selection tool. So I have this tool. I have my words selected using this selection tool. I could also change the scale by clicking and dragging diagonally one of the anchor points at the corner. And I'm going to hold the shift key down so I lock the proportion and I don't like do weird things like that because that doesn't look good. So I hold the shift key down and this is another way I could change the size. Also, if I put my cursor in the corner, you see I get the rounded corner and with a double arrow and that is if I wanted to rotate it. And so what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to rotate this. I have something pretty large and I want to show you how you can clip your words so that the box cuts them off and it's going to make it look like the words are um, coming from outside or the box or the box is cutting them off essentially because that can be kind of an interesting effect like the word out looks like it's going out of the box but let's get another word in here first before I do that so I'm going to go back to my text tool and type in again that's quite large I think I want to reduce this size and I'll use the word in and maybe I want to have um, several in so I could select this and I could keep pasting the word in over and over again I can also use that alt key just click and drag it down instead of pasting so I'm using the keyboard shortcut control V or command V on a Mac to do all my pasting and so there's nothing saying that you have to have just one one of the words you know maybe I want to have in multiple times maybe each one of these ins should be getting smaller. Maybe that could be kind of interesting. If they're getting smaller and smaller as they're moving along. This is the sort of stuff I want you to play with. So it's placement and scale. I think I skipped a number here. All right. So let's see, I was on 14, go down to 12, click on this one, go down to 11. So each one's getting smaller as I go. And I'll jump down to nine and then I have to play with like the alignment and adjust that. 
maybe now that I have more space, I'd want to keep going and just making them smaller and smaller until you can't even see the word in. Or maybe in should be inside of one of the letters or all inside the out. So that's why I want you to do three versions of each one of these. So that way you can keep experimenting and trying all of these different possibilities. So just again, on each artboard, you're going to have six different word sets. Then you redo those same six different word sets on the next artboard, trying different things. So now let's talk about how do we get the box to clip out the word out. For that, I need my layers. I'm going to open up my layers. I do have a lot of layers here. So you may want to separate things out, put each individual page um, on different layers or the box and the words in it on different layers, because here's the process. With my selection tool selected, I am going to go up to or select my path, which is the outline of my box, and find it here in my layers panel. Here it is, the second to last one. Now I'm going to find my word out, which is here, and holding, clicking and holding down my mouse, I'm going to drag it to be below my rectangle. And that didn't go. Come on. There you go. I have to let, land it right in the space in between. So now here's my rectangle. I'll click off, turn it off so you can see it disappears. And here's my word out, and it's right below. I want to have them both selected by holding the control key down and clicking into the little circle on the right. They're now both selected. Now I'm going to go up to my main menu, Object, and choose Clipping Mask, Make. And now my word out is being cut off. But the one thing that's kind of weird is that I lost the stroke on my outline here. So we have to go back and fix that. And what you may notice is that over here, it created a group. These words are all grouped together. So if I wanted to work on them individually, I actually have to deselect the other ones or just select that. All right, so what I need to do is I need to select my rectangle. So now this is the box, the rectangle, that's the one that's selected. And I go back over to my properties and I'm gonna put the stroke back on. And so now everything is working again, just as it was or should be, okay? So those are the steps if you want to create this effect, which I think could be really beneficial for this assignment. And um, I hope you have fun with this and just keep pushing it. Don't be afraid to like really be extreme, make things really small, really large, really take up the space, barely use the space. Um, I'd also like to give you a word of caution. Don't start with everything by default just in the middle. Um, think about why is there space below it or above it? You know, should the word be sitting on the bottom? Should it be sitting on the top? Should it be vertical? You could also look at the vertical type tool if you want to try that instead of the regular type tool. But, you know, maybe you start with your text by default right in the middle, but then move it around. Okay? Have fun with the assignment. Let me know if you have any questions.